Welcome to our Spotlight Matthew devotional for today. You'll recall from our last devotional, we considered uh, two individuals who were wannabe disciples and Jesus' teaching for them and for us was that we should count the cost before we jump into following Jesus. But then Jesus followed by saying, no cost is too high. Now buried within that little episode was the setting for the situation. Jesus had told his disciples that he was going to cross over the Sea of Galilee at that time and was actually interrupted by those two wannabe disciples. Sea of Galilee, once again, about 13 miles from north to south, seven miles from east to west. Jesus was probably in the northwest up near Capernaum and was going to cross over to the southeast corner. So with that little interruption over, we pick up the narrative of Jesus and his disciples finally now getting into the boat to make their journey across the Sea of Galilee. We pick up in chapter 8 with verse 23 in today's devotional. And when he, that's Jesus, got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm at sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And the disciples went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the wind and the waves obey him? Well, interestingly, we have this little episode with Jesus in which he is fast asleep in the stern of the boat. You know, you've heard the old saying, he could sleep or she could sleep through anything. Well, this would be a beautiful illustration of it. Here the wind has come up, the waves have come up, the boat is being swamped. And remember, we have professional fishermen in this boat, so they have seen plenty of bad weather on the Sea of Galilee, and they are afraid for their life, but Jesus seemingly could sleep through anything. Now, as we consider this particular little episode, I think a popular teaching that we often hear is that if one is, figuratively speaking, going through the winds of life or the waves of life, and one feels like one is swamped in one's life, call out to Jesus and Jesus will arise and he will calm the wind and he will still the waves of your life and he will bring the peace that you need that will deliver you out of that trial or that tribulation. I've heard that preached before. I've heard that done in devo spoken in devotions before. But I think it's really just a little bit off what is being taught to us through this episode. Because what I want us to notice in this is that the life lessons as we learn to live and live to serve has to do more with how Jesus wants us to live, not when he calms the wind and the waves of life, but more so how he wants us to live in the midst of the wind and the midst of the waves that beset us so regularly in daily life. He wants to show us how to live during the storm, not how he wants us to trust him to alleviate the storms or to calm the storms necessarily that we face in our lives. Because I want you to notice that Jesus addresses his disciples not after he has calmed the wind and the waves, he addresses them in the midst of it. They say, Lord, we're going to perish. Don't you care? We're all going to die here. And Jesus stands and looks at them and says, why are you afraid, O oh, you of little faith? And what we need to recognize is that the wind is still howling and the waves are still threatening to swamp the boat as Jesus speaks these words. He speaks about fear and he speaks about faith in the midst of the wind and the waves, in the midst of the trial and the challenge that they are experiencing us. And he says to them, don't be afraid, even when the wind is still up and even when the waves are still battering the boat, 
don't be people of little faith. In fact, the Greek word is a single word there, holigopistos, holigopistos, you little faiths is literally what Jesus says to them. Don't be little faiths, grow in your faith, a faith that overcomes fear in the midst of the storms. And even as these disciples were in the midst of a literal storm, we know that we go through figurative storms in life. And it's right then that Jesus speaks to our hearts and says, don't be afraid. In the midst of the trial, in the midst of the challenge, do not be afraid. I am with you. Even though I may seem like I'm asleep in the stern sometimes. Haven't you had that experience? I've had that experience. The winds are high, the waves are raging. I have trials and troubles and difficulties in my life, and I would call out to Jesus, but it seems like he can sleep through anything <laughs> at that time. But Jesus is always with us. He never leaves us or forsakes us. And even in those times when he is not responding immediately as we think he should, nevertheless, he says, don't be afraid. We are not to be afraid. He tells us not to be those of little faith, but to be those who have great faith in him. So I want to ask you today, what is your storm in life? Where are the winds of life buffeting you? Where are the waves high and seeming as though they threaten to swamp the ship of your life? You need to listen to Jesus even now in the midst of the storm saying, don't be afraid, but grow in faith. Do not look to Jesus necessarily and say, calm the storm remove the problem, deliver me from the situation. I don't know about you, but for me, I do pray that prayer too, and it's a fine prayer, and Jesus does then eventually calm the wind and the waves. But sometimes Jesus doesn't do that, does he? I've had plenty of occurrences where I've called out and he has calmed the wind and the waves, but I've also had plenty where he does not do that for me. But whether he does or whether he doesn't, he always calls me and he always calls you to not fear and to not be little faiths, but to grow in our faith until he decides that he will remove the trial and the challenge. You know, in closing, there's a, an illustration of this from church history. One of the great hymn writers of the Protestant church is a man named William Cooper. Now it's spelled C-O-W-P-E-R, but it's pronounced Cooper, not Cowper, who lived from 1731 till 1800. And Cooper was afflicted with severe, probably would be diagnosed today with clinical depression throughout his life. But somewhere around the age of 30 or so, he came to a vibrant living faith in Jesus Christ as his savior. He became closely associated with uh, the famous John Newton who wrote Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. And in fact, Cooper and Newton collaborated on many hymns. They turned it into a hymnal called the Olney Hymns. That's O-L-N-E-Y, Olney Hymns, named after John Newton's Olney Church. And Cooper indeed was uh, a man of devout sincere evangelical faith until he died in 1800. But here's the thing, Cooper was not immediately delivered from his fight, his battle with depression because he accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. He continued to be thwarted by it and challenged by it to consider even taking his life at points along the way. But people like Newton and others came around alongside him and encouraged him. They nurtured and strengthened and helped him through as William Cooper continued to learn not to be afraid, even in the face of the wind and the waves of depression, and to grow in his faith until the battle was over and the wind stopped and the waves ceased when he breathed his last and went home to Jesus in 1800. So I want to ask you again, what is your storm? What are your waves? Where is the wind in your life? Turn to Jesus and do so listening to some of the famous words of William Cooper in a hymn that he wrote in 1779. Light shining out of the darkness. Listen to Cooper's words. God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He plants his foot upon the sea. You see the reference to our passage here. He plants his foot upon the sea and moves upon the storm. You fearful servants, fresh courage take. 
the clouds you so much dread are big with mercy and they shall break with blessings on your head. That's Spotlight Good News for today. Check us out on Facebook and share us with others and we'll talk to you next time.